Okay, everyone. So I'm showing you one of the very few women that we know of that was making art at this time period. There are a couple other ones in the notes, but I wanted to focus in on De Rosy because she's uh, interesting in that she's doing these really detailed, beautiful reliefs like this, but notice the size one foot by nine inches one foot nine inches by one foot eleven inches so really quite small and in fact at this time period if you were a female and you wanted to be an artist the only way that you're going to be allowed to study art and make art is if your father was an artist or your husband was an artist and then you were allowed to be in the studios and training but even that was limited um, uh, in what you were allowed to do. And when you did get any kind of commission or work, it would be on a very small scale. You're not doing anything, any grand big pieces. So she um, is commissioned for this piece and she carves it. And her one of her male rivals questions whether or not she actually carved this and he challenges her. And she did in fact do it, but she ends up um, not even getting paid for it. So it was very difficult at this time period for women if they wanted to be an artist. She does a whole series of um, carvings on peach pits. So there was a whole um, history of doing these miniature carvings on peach pits. And she does this really amazing, beautiful one on uh, of the Last Supper on a peach pit. So now we're going to move to Venice. And in Venice, we have a whole other group of artists that are um, coming up and um, creating art. And most of them are using this new uh, medium called oil. They're not fresco painting. So oil on canvas here and on canvas and not wood panel. So this is new. The person I'm showing you here, Giorgiani, we don't have very many paintings by him because unfortunately he dies in the Black Plague. Like a plague that we're living through now, right? A pandemic. This was a plague. It swept across, not through the whole world, like the um, uh, yeah, COVID or coronaviruses at the moment but in Europe and in parts of Asia Minor and northern parts of Africa, this um, becomes quite an issue. So it's an unusual scene, um, but this is an unusual time that Giorgiani is living through. And like I said, he actually succumbs to the plague and he dies quite young. It's the first time we've ever seen a lightning bolt in a painting and it has this coming storm makes sense uncertainty of a plague the uncertainty of living through something like this we have the ruins which might be connected to the ancient greek or romans um, and how their civilization great civilization fell uh, then we have this woman who is breastfeeding not so unusual that she's breastfeeding in a park uh, she's naked like you know when you want to breastfeed, take off all your clothes and breastfeed. No one does that. So it's a little weird in that sense. She also looks directly at the viewer. She looks at us almost in a confrontational way, like we've happened upon this moment of her breastfeeding her child, this private moment, and we shouldn't be looking at it. So that is a little weird. And then this character or figure here, we don't know if he's representing a soldier or just some man that happens by because he is dressed more in the fashion of like the high society at the time. So there's some really un, some weird kind of stories that are going here that we don't really have an explanation for, but he's living, like I said, in a time of uncertainty, just like we're living right now in this very much a time of uncertainty. So I think you can connect to that. We have another painting here, and we're not sure if this is by the artist Giorgiani, like I just showed you his last painting, um, or another artist by the name of Titian, but it is one of those two artists. And it's called the Pastoral Concert, circa 1510. 
And it is making this reference back to the way things used to be, like before we can go, before coronavirus, the way things used to be. It's like almost like that. It's like the way things used to be, the way things, you know, where it was a simpler life when people lived on farms and they, uh, you know, grew their own food and they ate it. Now people are living in bigger cities like Venice and things are happening, plagues are happening and disasters are happening. And so it's kind of that idea of return to a simple life. We have two women here who are naked, kind of on the unusual side that they're like out there having a picnic or, you know, playing music and these women are naked. But the reference is that these are like the muses, the inspiration for the music. So therefore it's okay for them to be naked and it's accepted. Tishin goes on to do lots of portraits. Um, and uh, Isabella was uh, the queen of Spain and she um, hires him and she's a great patron of the arts. And here we have her um, in this really beautiful, um, uh, you know, cloak here or jacket here, of fur. You can see just the very high lavish kind of um, expensive material that her clothing is made out of. Notice how there's no background now. It's just black and maybe some kind of indication with these little folds here of some kind of material behind her or something. But it's just this this backdrop of you know material. And this we'll see moving forward that the art becomes more like it's presented on a stage or with no background often. And this allows him to play with the light in a very interesting way because he doesn't have to reason where is the light coming from. So we kind of tell the light is coming this direction from it being highlighted here. And this is what he becomes known for is his use of light and his use of um, the details, especially in things like the clothing. So now I'm showing you Titian's Venus of Urbino. And Venus, of course, is the goddess of love. So we have this woman that's laying here on this couch or bed and um, she's naked. So it, it's okay though, because she's the goddess of love or at least there's a reference there to the goddess of love. So it's acceptable. Okay, so that's the first thing to say. Let's analyze this a little bit more. We're not 100% sure, but there is one theory about this painting that I'll go with for you. Um, this woman is actually the one who hired the artist Titian to paint this. And she painted this for her husband as a wedding present. So here she is laid out on the bed. The dog is always a reference to fidelity. So she's saying she's going to be faithful to him. And then let's look at the background a little bit and then we'll come back to her. We've got two of her servants here that are taking out clothes for her. So perhaps she just took a bath and she's here and they're taking out their clothes, her, this dress here. They're going to dress her because they are her servants. We have this really beautiful use of light again um, and the, it brings her eye out here. This is in Italy where it's very warm, so they don't have, um, you know, and before really the availability of glass. So it's just this open window. So now back to her. So she looks directly at us, just like the previous uh, painting I showed you by Giorgiani we have this woman looking at us, although she has kind of like the side look, but it still is in a way a little confrontational to us as the viewer. She kind of hides herself, but not exactly. She really is opening herself up to us as the viewer, or if this is truly was intended to be for her husband, to her husband. And she holds a group of flowers here and one has fallen, making a reference to being deflowered on their uh, wedding night. So we have this scene that is set up and it's an important painting because we will see that it gets copied again and again and again. 
and we'll come back to this painting by Titian, the Venus of Urbino. And now our next artist that we'll look at is Tintoretto. And this is the Last Supper. And I've always liked this uh, image uh, of the angels in this painting because I think it was a really interesting way to paint them that it almost becomes this outline as though we're able to see through the angels and we can kind of make the assumption that the people in the room can't see the angels. Um, and I like that kind of, uh, you know, figuring out how to paint it, that it reads that way. One thing that Tintoretto does that's very different with this scene is instead of having the table across like this, he has put this table at a diagonal. And I've said many times the diagonal lines indicate movement. So he's got a lot of movement in the painting by turning the table that way. But it also kind of changes the scene that's happening here of the Last Supper. So then you have these other servants and you have the angels and you have the space to put in these other elements of the painting. We also have this very dark palette where we have it really, really dark with only the light of the central figures of Jesus and the apostles. And then we have, uh, you know, this uh, light here. So the way he's using light, just like um, our previous uh, painter Titian, um, becomes a very important element within this painting. 